So let's have a quick look at our players. Well, yeah, we, so Argentina versus Japan, we've already seen one match, it's time for the second one. So, Julian Martinez, we have uh, in 2018 Montevideo Special Event Top 8, uh, in 2020 the Players' Cup Top 8 as well there, and the Players' Cup 1, and 2021 World Cup of VGC Top 16 as they did as well in 2022. So, a few acc accolades as well, showcasing that, of course, World Cup is quite important, and now finally being here in that semi-final uh this time bring a team a quite interesting team that uh i haven't seen quite a bit well if you've if people have been following the scene a bit more closely particularly in south america this team is the team that was runner-up at laic the latin american international championships this year losing out in fact to marco silva um who will who will be seeing next up in the order but this team is one that people have seen before it's a very weird team, the highlight really being the Regilecki, something that before LOIC, no one had really seen very much, uh, or certainly not to any great success, and there was a lot of discussion mm. around it afterwards. The Terra Ice Regilecki, something people were discussing before the game even came out, when Terrastalization was revealed as a potential option. No one really made it work until LOIC, and then that Regilecki, very, very fast, with access to Electroweb for speed control, and Terra Blast now letting it break through ground types, becoming very scary, especially next to something like Chiyu with its Beads of Ruin ability. Yeah, we have seen uh, the meta kind of form a lot around Urshfu and around these physical threats, but it's nice to showcase uh, sometimes that Fluttermane Chiyu is still one of those things that can threaten a lot of the teams and a lot of the meta as well. Uh, with Reggie Aleki, as you said, well, a Pokemon that was top tier in previous formats now just a bit falling off uh, next to his brother reggie drago but interestingly to see next to an indeedy with psychic surge because a uh, reggie like being quite fast pokemon but not that bulky and then uh, a lot of priority moves being able to threaten this reggie like and then you have indeedy with the potential of that psychic train and then as well for the follow me making sure that this reggie like is able to keep dealing uh, this amount huge amount of damage as well thanks to his transistor ability yeah like you said that indeedy protecting that reggie like from priority moves and from attacks in general with the follow me but also the chi and the flutter main both kind of frail pokemon that hit very very hard Famously in Shiyu's case, Fluttermane with a Focus Sash here as well. Not something you see very often on Fluttermane. You often see Choice Specs or you'll see Booster Energy. This one with Focus Sash guaranteeing it will survive one hit from anything not named Urshifu Rapid Strike. And we see the Ogapon here as well. Often you'll see Ogapon with Follow Me, but with Follow Me and Odidi, you don't necessarily need the Ogapon to be a redirection user as well. Instead, opting for that Swords Dance to make itself extra threatening. And Tornadus, a mainstay in this format with the Tailwind and the Rain Dance making itself a very strong support Pokemon with these safety goggles, trying to get around potentially any Amoongasids that could give this team any trouble. Yeah, So let's exactly. have a quick look now at Yosuke and his team and his achievements. So yeah, as we see Yosuke, we has the 2023 World's Top 16 in 2022, the Japanese National uh, in Top 16 as well, 2021 VR Circuit Winter Series Top 16, and in 2021 again VR Circuit Winter Series Q3 Champion. So also quite a few accolades, and this time around we see another Ursula Cresselia this time around, uh, but this time this Cresselia is ready for taunts here uh, <laughs> with the Mental Herb as we have Torkoal as well assisting it. Yeah, we see Life Orb Torkoal as well here, which is very interesting, because that Eruption move on Torkoal does very, very big damage, but the amount of damage it does is directly linked to how much health Torkoal has left. So that Life Orb recoil does make Eruption a little bit weaker, but with Luna Blessing on Cresselia, there is a way to offset that. You could Erupt, take that Life Orb chip, and then Luna Blessing back up to full health for a maximum power Eruption on the next turn. Interestingly though, we don't see Pollen Puff on Amoongus. Would have been another way to maybe heal your Torkoal up for more eruptions later. But instead of the usual Pollen Puff and Rage Powder, we have Protect, Spore, Leaf Storm, and Sludge Bomb with a Focus Sash on Amoongus. Not something you see very often at all. I've not seen Focus Sash on Amoongus, particularly. Uh, that, it has been a commonly. while seeing that. <laughs> it, it's been a while. I think the last time I saw it commonly was back in the Dynamax formats where yeah. uh, Max Dreams or Max wildfires would potentially knock it out but instead here maybe that means yosuke is opting for a more offensive uh build on his amoongus training it more in its special attack for those sludge bombs and those leaf storms 
The rest of the team, pretty standard. You've got the Sword Starts Ursa Luna. You've got a standard Crest Elia set with, like you said, the Mental Herb. Not going to get run down by any taunts that Julian does not have on his team, but nice to cover the threat. And then Iron Hands, very nice pairing with Cresselia and Ursa Luna and Fluttermane as well. So this is a very standard kind of hard Trick Room team by the looks of things. But it's only got one Trick Room setter, so you are relying a lot on that Cresselia. But also you have the Fluttermane in case that Trick Room is not being used. And in fact, we see both Trick Room and Fluttermane in the lead here from Yosuke as Fluttermane Cresselia are the leads for Yosuke, and we see the Chiyu and Ogapon Wellspring Mask from Julian. Yep, exactly, as he said. So Ogapon being on the field, we have already established that this Ogapon is a source and set, so trying to set up uh, any potential uh, strong moves like Ivy Cudgel and Horn Leeches here. Uh, and the immediate Cresselia lead makes me believe that, yeah, of course, Yosuke does have quite a strong Trick Room team here, trying to make sure that he is able to set this Trick Room. Uh, by threatening anything that could potentially kill this uh, Cresselia here with that thanks to that Fluttermane. You have the Chi of course lowering the special defense uh, as well. So this Fluttermane being just a bit more threatening thanks to that choice specs and then as well the uh, Chi there. As we do have the activation of that Terra type onto that Fluttermane going for that immediate Terra Fairy making sure that it's gonna do fa uh, be fairly effective against either of these Pokemon. It was a really obvious attempt, at a, uh, not attempt, but a, a chance for a pun there. Fairly effective with the Terra Fairy <laughs> on the Fluttermane. And we see a Terra Fire coming out from that Chiyu. That's very, very scary. The amount of damage a potential overheat here is going to do is a lot. But also it gives it a resistance to this Moonblast potentially, or another Fairy move coming out from the Fluttermane. Spiky Shield coming out from the Ogre Pond from Julian, and we'll see what this Fluttermane locks into. It is going to be Dazzling Gleam. Chiyu going to be able to take this relatively comfortably with this Terrastalization. Not really a threat of being knocked out here, and now it comes down to can a big right. overheat potentially from Chiyu. No, it's a Snarl coming out, doing big damage to the Cresselia. Big, well, not a huge amount of damage to the Fluttermane, but lowering the special attack, importantly, there. Yep, it is, as she said, going for the Snarl there, trying to make sure that uh, this, of course, this Fluttermane will do a bit less damage as well. For the, going for the Terra as well, with the Terra Fire being able to resist any type of Fairy type moves, but still taking half with a Helping Hand, fa uh, helping hand Fairy uh, type boost. It's Choice Specs Fluttermane. That's a gleam. It's still impressive to see, nonetheless. It's you now suddenly uh, still not in the greatest positions, uh, but it might be able to survive here with. Thanks to that snarl decrease here, as we have the switch up from the Cresselia going into that Iron Hands this time around, go for any potential fake out pressure here. As a Dazzling Gleam coming out from this Fluttermane, do it gonna do a lot of damage here? As it just oh, kills it's the Ogre hit on the Ogrepon. That critical hit with that snarl drop on Fluttermane, obviously gonna matter in that situation. Maybe even she used Beads of Ruin ability, pushing that damage over the edge as the Ogrepon gets taken out in one hit. And Chiyu, not happy that its partner's gone down, takes revenge, KOing that Fluttermane with a big heat wave, doing about half to Iron Hands, which is not something you say very often, uh, with the Life Orb boosted, Terra Fire boosted, Beads of Ruin boosted heat wave from this Chiyu. But that KO on Ogapon is very, very big from Yosuke. A stroke of luck there, and one he is not going to be complaining about. Exactly. Now, this, uh, now you do have the potential. Uh, to bring in the Ndidi as well, so you can be faked out onto your Chiyu, but your Chiyu is quite low right now, and you are carrying that Life Orb item. We have seen Heatwave do a lot of damage, so I do believe a second Heatwave uh, could potentially knock out either of these Pokemon as well, especially with the Terra Fire here. Ndidi even having the potential to helping a hand, uh, making sure that this Heatwave is able to kill, but that is, of course, where the threat lies of him. Heat wave. It is an amazing move, but itty tiny chance that it can miss. Yeah, we do see that heat wave coming out again. The Terrifier boosted move. Both of them hang on. Maybe a helping hand would have been enough to push it over the edge. I think Julian just a little bit worried about a miss. But the Indeedee coming in, stopping the fake out, means that that move is guaranteed to go off. Indeedee, it looks like he's going to go for that psychic into the iron hands, electing to just take some safer damage on that in case the heat wave misses. But. The flip side of that is the Cresselia now stays alive to get that Trick Room up for Yosuke. And if there is a Trick Room Sweeper here, maybe a Torkoal or an Ursaluna in the back end, 
Julian may regret going for the Psychic rather than the Helping Hand and not taking out the Cresselia as we do see the Torkoal coming in, but this Tornadus has Rain Dance. Yeah, being able to uh, mitigate a bit of the damage that this Torkoal is able to do thanks to its ability draw as well. The Sun then no longer being up if you're able to Rain Dance, but your Tornadus is seemingly the best at, uh, attacker right now as it indeed is deemed more of a support Pokemon. You do have the Psychic in the Psychic Train, which is able to do quite a bit of damage to this Torkoal either way as well. So uh, it's still an awkward pos position for Julian, as we do have the Rain Dance coming out from this Tornado, making sure that this Torkoal's fire type moves will do just that little bit less as the Eruption coming out, doing not that much damage anymore. That was a Life Orb boosted Eruption from a Torkoal and that Rain Dance immediately paying dividends. As we see that Lunar Blessing again, like I said earlier, Coming out, healing that Torkoal back up to full, keeping its eruptions at full power. But full power at the moment for that Torkoal is not very much, especially taking that Psychic Terrain boosted Psychic from Indeedee. And now Tornadus is threatening with Bleak Wind Storms as well, perfectly accurate with this Rain Up. And unlike the Cresselia we saw in the last game, Yosuke's Cresselia is running Moonblast rather than Ice Beam. And so it's not threatening that much damage into this Tornadus here. If Tornadus can hang on this turn and get a Bleak Wind Storm off, that's going to be a big, big amount of damage into the Torkoal and into the Cresselia. Yeah, suddenly the tables seem to be a bit turned around, even though the Tornadus and EDD do, don't seem that much as damage dealers. They are just the right Pokemon in this position, being able to put up the Rain Dance and have enough bulk to really try and threaten Josuke's uh, team still a bit, as we do have the Helping Hand coming into that Torkoal, trying to see it being able to do a bit more damage here with the heat wave here but thanks to that rain still not doing all that much as indeed he is going for the psychic trying to make sure that this Torkoal will heat wave no longer yeah Torkoal going down to that psychic and now we're gonna get a single target bleak wind storm from the tornadoes into the Cresselia which is enough to pick up the KO and seal the first game for Julian. I think a really interesting play from Julian to bring the Tornadus and the Indeedee as the two back-end Pokemon there. You often see those Pokemon led alongside an offensive threat to either keep it safe or give it speed control with Tailwind, but uh, Julian realizing in that situation, if there is the threat of Trick Room or Torkoal yeah. uh, in the back-end from Yosuke, having that Rain Dance access is super valuable. Having access to Psychic Terrain, if maybe an Iron Hands lead come, comes out, you can bait a fake out by not having your Ndidi in the lead and yep. making your opponent think maybe you didn't bring the Ndidi and then switch that in later. So it's it's risky, I think, to play such a passive back end and lead your offensive threats like that. Especially if you if get crit, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, your off, if your offensive threats go down, then we saw that you did just about enough damage uh, yeah. to make that doable for Julian. But if your offensive threats go down early game and your back end is Tornadus and Indeedee, you're just lacking the damage output to, to get through that end game. So a calculated risk from Julian and one that paid off very well in that game one. Yeah, it's just as you said, like those are the right Pokemon still to have in the back. Uh, Indeedee luckily having Psychic, a lot of them tend to run Naz and Gleam. So Psychic just being boosted with that terrain as well, just providing all the damage as well. So let's see how Josuke will adapt here. Uh, to try and see what they will do to make sure that this Chiu will not go rampant as we have the Fluttermane and the Chiu Elite as old as time as the Cresselia Iron Hands on Yosuke's side. This is a lead we've seen a lot. It's a lead we've gotten used to over the course of this most recent couple of VGC series. The Chiu Fluttermane, the Beast of Ruin from Chiu boosting Fluttermane's damage output to astronomical levels. Fluttermane here immune to the fake out potentially from Iron Hands, threatening it with big fairy type attacks. This lead's very scary, but at the same time, Iron Hands has access to fake out here, could potentially fake out the Chiyu. Cresselia can maybe get a trick from up as a result. So it's a bit of a call here, and he does go for the fake out, Yosuke, saying, I don't think you're gonna switch in your Ndidi here. I think you want the damage. Moonblast coming out with that Beads of Ruin doing a lot of damage, but the Assault Vest saving the Iron Hands thanks to the Focus Sash on Fluttermane rather than offensive item. And now the Trick Room goes up and Julian is in a slightly tricky position. Yep, because of course, with the Iron Hands onto the field, still uh, being one of the slowest Pokemon, it is able to threaten both the Fluttermane and the Chiu. Of course, as you said, the Fluttermane having that Focus Sash, being able to survive one extra move. But of course you can, uh, for example, go for a double up onto uh, this Fluttermane uh, 
uh, in that regard. Just trying to ignore the Chiyu in that regard. But yeah, that is the part where Trick Room is a bit hard to play sometimes, where you have to call out the right turn and the right time to which Pokemon will protect here. Try and make as much use of your Trick Room as possible, as we do have the Cressela switching out here for another Pokemon here. It is going to be that Ursaluna. Ursaluna, a huge Trick Room threat. What threat once it gets that Guts boost off. As long as there is not a Weezing on the other side of the field, which there is not in this case, then it becomes very, very scary. We see a Drain Punch going to protect here into that Chi slot, but we see the Shadow Ball coming out from Fluttermane, electing not to hit the wow. Iron Hands for that potential super effective damage, and Ursaluna coming in on that Ghost-type immunity, thanks for its normal typing. And now Ursaluna's in a very, very threatening position. It's got its Guts boost off. It's got the threat of Facade or Earthquake here that it can go for, potentially a switch from the Iron Hands back into Cresselia to get that Levitate ability in play, get the Earthquake off. This is a very, very scary position, I think, if you're Julian. This is now Ursaluna's game, and Julian just has to survive it. Yep, as we have the facade from the Ursaluna into that Chiyu, Chiyu just protecting, meaning not really be able to protect again in that regard, as Heavy Slam into that Fluttermane, Fluttermane being able to survive thanks to its Focus Sash, now being able to deal as much damage as possible still in this second turn of Trick Room. Shadow Ball into the Iron Shadow Ball coming out! Does that pick up? It doesn't pick up! Wow. I think Julian reading the Cresselia coming into the Iron Hand slot. They're going for the Shadow Ball to try and maximize that damage, but instead just fails to pick up the KO on that Iron Hands. And now indeed he comes in. It can threaten Follow Me to keep attacks away from its partner, but not if this Ursa Luna starts pressing Earthquake. And with the Cresselia and its Levitate ability still in the back, this is going to be tricky for Julian to navigate in this situation. Exactly. It is, uh, of course, one of those options uh, to keep your Cressela in the back and always switch it in for a potential Earthquake here. And it's not really looking like uh, Julian has that many options right now. You can protect for the Flutter main here, of course, uh, stalling out another turn of Trick Room here. Uh, Indeedy, of course, having that Psychic, which is nice offensively with this Psychic terrain, as we do have the switch out here on Josuke's side, which will be that Cresselia. So a Earthquake might be incoming as Indeedee is actually opting to protect here as well my, as well as the Fluttermane might, but no, just an Earthquake coming out. And so this Fluttermane will go down despite its Focus Sash and it being on one HP, of course. <laughs> yeah, Fluttermane going down here, and now we will see what Julian has in the back. It's gonna make a big difference here. If it's this Ogre Pond, there's maybe a chance if you go for Follow Me, set up a Swords Dance, potentially stall out the last couple of turns of Trick Room. There's something you can do with this. Maybe the reason he didn't go for the Protect on Fluttermane there was to try and position this Ogre Pond with the Follow Me to keep a facade away from it. But this is a lot of work you're asking one Ogre Pond to do in this scenario. It's going to be very tricky, I think, for Julian to come back from this situation. Yeah, it is uh, gonna be rough here to say the least. Ogre Pond, of course, being able to threaten quite a bit, but a Guts boosted facade is a lot to ask to, for it to take, for example. Indeedy, being one of those Pokemon that has been run quite bulky, quite defensively bulky, especially with the Psychic Seed there, trying to make sure that it is able to survive uh, anything here, really. As we have the Terra onto the Ursuluna, going for that Terra. Goes making sure that no longer these Ivy Cutters or Horn Leeches will be able to hit this Ursula for super effective damage. Yeah, you're correct there. Just getting rid of that super effective threat of the Water and Grass type moves from this Ogre Pond. Indeed, he does go for the Follow Me here. And we'll see what Ursula goes for. Is it going to be the Facade or the Earthquake? It is the Earthquake. The Helping Hand going to boost that up to absurd levels. Does this KO the Indeedy? Indeedy Ooh. hangs on. Okay. And Ogapon goes for the sword stance here, but we do see the Ogapon has taken a little under half, no, a little bit over half, sorry, over half, from yeah. that Earthquake. So potentially another Helping Hand Earthquake on the cards, but the Trick Room is gone. So now there's a bit of a mind game to be played here, because I think with the sword stance boost and a Helping Hand from Indeedee, Ogapon will probably be able to KO one of these two Pokemon. It's just a case of which Pokemon they target down. If Yosuke goes for a Protect here on the Ursaluna, and this Terra Water Ivy Cudgel comes out into the uh, Cresselia, then there's maybe something on the cards for no. Julian. But if they go for the Cresselia and Ursuluna simply attacks here, takes out the Ogre Pond, then it's going to be lights out for both of Julian's Pokemon. We do see the Helping Hand come out here 
Are we going to see the protect from Yosuke? We don't. The Horn Leech coming out. Is it enough? It is enough. Horn Leech picks up the Ursa Luna. See, uh, I think that was uh, quite fine to do so. Uh, maybe the Ursa Luna being gone is one thing, but what does Yosuke still have in the back here for the potential? Being able to still deal quite a bit of damage there as just a Moon Blast coming out from Cristela into the indie, not being enough. Pick it up. Just going on to the offensive here. I was totally expecting a Trick Room uh, for the last Pokemon thinking it was going to be the Iron Hands, but seemingly it is that Fluttermane right now. We do see the Fluttermane coming back in as that last Pokemon. Indeed, he has access to Follow Me here, uh, so it can keep the biggest of attacks away from Ogapon. This Fluttermane is Choice Specs as well, which means that you can't stop it from taking a big Horn Leech here, potentially, or an Ivy Cudgel from Ogapon. Maybe Yosuke is going to angle for an Iron Hand switch in on that slot, sacrifice the Iron Hands to bring in the Fluttermane again once indeed he is taken out by a Moonblast from this Cresselia. Still a call to be made here, but it's looking like it's actually in Julian's favor now at this point, having got the call correct on that previous turn. Yeah, exactly. And the Moonblast now came with the Indeedy, giving the Indeedy just yet another chance to potentially follow me, forcing this Fluttermane not to be able to go for a Dazzling Gleam because the Dazzling will not be enough to KO this Ogopon, which also has Terrestrialized, uh, being solo water type, but also having that Embody aspect, raising its special defense as well, making sure that this Fluttermane will not do all that much damage as the Indeedy actually opting to go for the Protect here. What does Yosuke's case? Um, oh, it's just going for the Moonblast onto just the Ogopon. Not KOing it, but dropping a bit of a special attack there. As the Horn Leech into that flood main will be enough to kill that yet again. The question now is, do we see a Trick Room come out from Yosuke here? That's a really nice play to protect the Indeedy saying, okay, you can't actually KO my Ogapon here with either of your Pokemon, thanks to that special defense boost from the Terrestrialization. So I'm just going to take the guaranteed KO onto the Fluttermane here. And now Iron Hands can come back in, but the Follow Me is still available to Julian, which means you can go for Follow Me here, take that attack away from the Iron Hands, just KO the Iron Hands with your Ogapon, and then Cresselia with nothing but Moonblast can't break through this Ogapon, especially now that it's got that Sword Stance boost threatening that big damage with its Terra Water Ivy Cudgel. Yeah. Julian just showcasing that, still being in control of the game here, uh, even though Trick Room was set up quite early, even though, uh, like, <laughs> honestly, I did not expect Julian to still be this thriving right now with the Ursula onto the field. Uh, Ursula having that burn, having still uh, being in that Trick Room, now being in a position where Indeedee is still able to follow me at 6 HP, uh, while charged into that Indeedee, making sure that this Indeedee finally goes down. But now there's still this Ogrepon at plus two, being able to do all the damage in the world here as well. Uh, Moonblast from Cressela into the Ogrepon, barely doing any damage. Another special attack drop, unfortunately. Uh, Ivy Cudgel is more than is more than special. It is very physical. Ivy Cudgel into that Iron Hands will be enough, and the critical hit to boot as well. Uh, and now it is just this solo Cresselia versus this Ogrepon. Yeah, we saw how little damage that Moonblast did there, barely tickling the Ogapon. This game, I think, is unfortunately over. Yosuke gonna play it out here, Moonblast coming out again, just barely tickling the Ogapon. Another special attack drop, uh, and we're gonna see how much damage this plus two Terra Water Ivy Cudgel does to the Cresselia. Does it pick it up? It doesn't pick it up, but I think the damage is done at this point. And like yeah. you said, Julian looked very much out of this game. For the early turns, but he did a very, very good job of forcing himself into a position where he protected that Indeedee, allowed the Fluttermane to get KO'd, to bring in the Ogre Pond, to then threaten to get that Sword Stance up with the Follow Me. And this Indeedee, very, very bulky, we saw it take the Earthquake with the Helping Hand from the Ursa Luna, allowing that Sword Stance to go up. And then Julian had managed to position himself such that it was just a 50-50 on that turn where he took out the Ursa Luna.